Murray Bowen was born in a rural town, Waverly, Tennessee, in 1913. He was the oldest of five children. He earned his bachelor's in science from the University of Tennessee, Knoxville in 1934. Bowen continued his studies at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, where three years later, he received his MD. After graduating, he accepted a fellowship in psychiatry at the Menninger Foundation in Topeka, Kansas in 1946. Bowen stayed with the foundation until 1954. He later became a professor of clinical psychiatry at Georgetown. It was here that he founded and directed the Georgetown Family Center. He is also known for founding the American Family Therapy Association, and he served as their first president. During his tenure at Georgetown in the 1950s, Bowen began to deviate from the popular Freudian theory in family therapy. This coincided with the movement away from Gestalt psychology. Freudian psychoanalysis was successful at treating a host of mental health disorders on an individual level, but Bowen felt it was not applicable to more severe mental illness and certainly not to family dynamics. Bowen began to incorporate family therapy into his research with the overarching goal of creating evidence-based treatment in family therapy. His theoretical position was informed by evolutionary psychology and he specifically wanted to create a theory founded on science-based natural systems. Pioneered by Freud and the Little Hans work, family psychoanalysis and treatment began as early as 1909. Unfortunately, Psychoanalysis at the time worked from the individual's perspective of family interactions and not direct observations. Further, the model of psychoanalysis was ill-fit to treat individuals whose partner was the source of stress or anxiety. The current model at the time applied treatment and group therapy to the family. Bowen viewed the individual's psychosis as a symptom of an active process involving all members of an anxious family. In the early 1930s, psychoanalysis was well accepted and family therapy was growing in popularity. As psychiatry began to move and treat more severe emotional illnesses, the need for family therapy increased. In its beginning stages, family therapy was an extension of psychoanalysis. The model at that time did apply treatment to family therapy based on group therapy treatment. Bowen joined the National Institute of Mental Health in 1954. Bowen viewed the individual's psychosis as a symptom of an active process involving all members of an anxious family. This hypothesis led him to study women with schizophrenia and their mothers. He started collecting data that would later inform the development of the family systems theory. While at the National Institute for Mental Health, he formally began his study, family study, with a team of researchers trained to collect data and facilitate treatment. Bowen spent several years at the NIMH exploring the family relationships of these schizophrenic children. Within the first two years of research, the focus of the research had shifted from the individual to the family as the unit of illness. Individual therapy had been replaced with group family therapy. Bowen even changed the project title from research into schizophrenia to the family study project. While his research began with only mothers and their daughters, by 1955, he had begun to include fathers and siblings of the children. This eventually led to the development of triangles, a key component in the family systems theory. It also led to research on birth order and role in the family. Within three years of starting this research, Bowen had created the foundation of an observable, describable, and effective treatment model of family therapy. In just five years, Bowen had developed the core concepts of the Bowen family systems theory. Family therapy saw tremendous growth in the 1960s. Bowen described the state of family therapy in the 1950s and 1960s as a healthy state of unstructured chaos. By this, he meant that the lack of organization and specificity in family therapy was typical for the beginning stages of any treatment development. Bowen did consider the movement of including family members into therapeutic sessions as healthy, 
Bowen also posited that including family members changed the therapist's perspective. Bowen believed that family therapy should include some level of emotional distancing by the therapist and an emphasis on direct observation. Unfortunately, several investigators and practitioners were implementing family therapy with different methods and techniques. This contributed to the unstructured chaos. Bowen describes his thought at this stage in the following quote, the focus on the family instead of the individual provided a completely different thinking dimension. With the families living together, I could see a completely different world. Years of work suddenly became clear. The new view produced so many researchable clues, it was impossible to know which was most important. It was important to Bowen that family therapy have a science-based natural systems model. In establishing his natural systems model, symbiosis, fusion, and differentiation were taken from biology to show the common ground between the human family and other living systems in nature. This contradicted many theories of the time. Most investigators focused on how humans were different as opposed to Bowen's research, which focused on how humans might be like other species. In 1957, Bowen presented his findings at the American Orthopsychiatrics Association meeting in Chicago. According to Bowen, all individuals in the family unit are affected by the behaviors of their family members while simultaneously affecting those members with their own individual behaviors. He considered family to be an emotional unit that consisted of varying relationships. These relationships often formed triangles or dyads. Other theoretical components included differentiation of self, nuclear family emotional process, multi-generational transmission process, emotional cutoff, sibling position, and societal emotional process. Bowen theorized that dyadic relationships are less stable than triadic relationships. A dyadic relationship might be one consisting of two spousal members or one spouse member and one child. Tension between two members of a relationship can cause one member to solicit emotions and behaviors from a third. This inclusion of a third member allows for the diffusion of anxiety through increased interactions with this third member. Relational tensions and anxieties can develop in these dyadic and triadic relationships. This can occur when one member tries to influence another. Differentiation of self is the acknowledgement of dependency on others in the relationship. This basic building blocks of a self are inborn but an individual's family relationships during childhood and adolescence primarily determine how much self will be developed. Once established, the level of self remains stable unless a person makes a concerted effort to change it. The less developed a person's self is, the more impact others have on that individual's functioning, and the more th that same individual will try to control the functioning of others. A person with a well-differentiated self recognizes his realistic dependence on others. This differentiation of self allows the individual to maintain low susceptibility to influence in the face of conflict, criticism, and rejection. A person with a well-differentiated self can assess a situation without being overly influenced by their emotions. Bowen's family system theory uniquely allowed for the prediction of certain patterns of conflict within the family unit. For example, parental anxieties externalized to the children undermine the child's developing self. This might include a parent being overly concerned with the child's health, and these behaviors can be internalized by the child, who might then begin to display behaviors that affirm the parent's concern. Another example might include the dysfunction and emotional distancing of a spouse. This could lead to overemphasizing attention to the child's behavior, thus increasing the emotional distance. As described in these examples, a key piece in family patterns involves the reciprocity of behaviors between family members. These patterns are a function of one family member's projecting or influencing another 
while simultaneously being influenced as well. All family members contribute equally to the family projection process, but in different ways. To reduce tensions that might arise from family conflict, one member may emotionally distance themselves. Emotional distancing can happen naturally as one member physically moves away, such as a child leaving to build his or her own family. Other examples might include withdrawal from the family and suppression of emotional sharing with the family. All family members have a need for emotional and physical fulfillment, but family members can vary in the amount needed to reach that fulfillment. Bowen's daughter, Joanne Bowen, described her father's journey in the following quote. His journey became one of an ethologist, a scientist who studies animal behavior and the social relationships that sustain life. Having lived in a small rural community where families had lived for generations, he understood the important role social relationships play in sustaining the very fabric of an agricultural community. Ultimately, he developed a natural systems theory about the biological basis of human relationships. Bowen made major contributions to family studies research. He defined and conceptualized patterns of conflict within the family. This allowed therapists to intervene and teach family members to recognize these patterns and interrupt them. He pioneered uniform methods of family therapy by providing an evidence-based natural science model. He developed concepts of triangles, which described the pivoting tension or anxiety among family members. The concept of triangles is a key piece in identifying these family patterns. Finally, his theory of differentiation of self has been important in developmental psychology and adolescent studies. His theory on differing roles in the family across birth order and how this affects personality development has also been greatly influential in family studies. Bowen was heavily influential in the field of psychiatry and psychology. He earned several awards over his lifetime. He was awarded Distinguished Alumnus Award from the University of Tennessee and Alumnus of the Year from the Menninger Foundation. He was a member of the American Psychiatric Association, the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, and he was president of the American Family Therapy Association in 1961. Bowen also authored around 50 book chapters, papers, and monographs based on his work. His most influential publications include The Use of Family Theory in Clinical Practice, Toward the Differentiation of Self and One's Family of Origin, and Family Therapy in Clinical Practice. Murray Bowen passed away from lung cancer at the age of 77 in his home in Chevy Chase, Maryland on October 9, 1990. He was survived by a wife and three daughters. The legacy of his work and theory led to the creation of the Bowen Center, which is dedicated to family studies, and family therapy has been heavily influenced by his research. <laughs>